Hi everyone, in this task you will be checking if a number is positive. So the program task description says write a program that takes an input from the user as a number and displays to the user whether the input number is a positive number or not. So you need to solve this task in two ways. First using if, elif, and else statements and second using nested conditionals. So go ahead, attempt the challenge and pause the video. You're going to see my solution after three seconds. How was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. So first of all, let's uh, go through the approach one. So I'm going to say approach one and that is using um, else. So using F f triple dots lf triple dots and else statement so how would we do that if we wanted uh, to use f lf and else so basically we want to check if a number is positive but to take it to the next level i want to show to the user if that number is zero or a negative number so we basically end up with three print statements First off, let's grab the number from the user and let's change it to uh, type of, uh, because it's a string, inputs are strings, we need to convert it to an integer. And I'm going to say enter a number. And then we check if the number, if the number is greater than zero, it means that it is a positive number, right? So we are going to say print. Uh, you, uh, I'm just going to say positive number and then if, and then we are going to say LF, uh, let's go there. Let's say LF, LF number is equal to zero. We are going to say print, uh, zero number, zero number. And eventually we are going to say else. So if it is not if it is not positive and it is not zero, it means that it is a negative number. I could basically make this a little bit better. I could say you have entered entered a positive number. You have entered zero. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna grab this, copy it, and I'm gonna put it right here. You have entered zero. And eventually, we are going to say you have entered a negative number, negative number. Let's save this file and let's run it. Let's clear this. So I'm going to run this code. It says enter a number. So I'm going to enter 10. It says you have entered a positive number. And if I run it again, you have entered zero, run it again we have you have entered a negative number so so far this application is complete let's clear this so this is our first approach in the second approach we need to use uh, conditional um, nested conditional so i'm going to say approach two using nested conditionals how can we do that so i'm going to keep the number as it is so we are going to say if if number, let me remove that first space, if number is greater than or equal to zero, what do we want to do here? So if number is greater than or equal to zero, I'm going to add another if statement to check if the number is equal to zero or greater than zero, because for each of them, for each of those conditions, we are going to have a different message. So first off, let's check if number is greater than zero. So if number is greater than zero, we are going to say you have entered a positive number. Let's copy that part and put it right here. But what if, what if uh, the user has entered a, uh, what have I done here? So I'm just, I need to copy that and I need to paste it here. Now, what if the user has entered zero and that is going to be contained within the else statement. And for that, we are going to say print, you have entered zero. So let me do that. And eventually in the else statement, we are going to print. So we have, um, 
uh, checked if it is greater than zero or equal to zero, but we have not checked if it is a negative number or less than zero. Let's save all of that. Let's run this code. And it is going to say enter a number. Let's add 10. You have entered a positive number. Let's add 56, positive. Let's add zero. It says zero. Let's add minus one, all of this. It says you have entered a negative number. Now, there is a problem with this application, and that is we have not actually handled any corner cases. We have not handled any errors. Now, because throughout this chapter, we will be working with a lot of numbers and a lot of number-based tasks, I will be just showing you, I will be just showing you in this task how you can handle exceptions in case the user does not enter a number. So, the problem is whenever you run this application and by mistake you try, you enter W and when you hit enter, it says in value error invalid literal for integer with base 10, which is a string of W. Where is this error coming from? It is coming from line number three. Why? Because the user has entered a string and when you pass in string to an integer, uh, uh, this is actually a, a string. When you pass a string to an integer, a string of words, not a string of a number, it cannot decode it. It cannot basically grab it and take away the um, quotations and you're not going to end up with a number because integer is just for converting to a number. And you can only grab a string of number and convert it to a number. You cannot grab a string of a word and then convert it to a number. That's why we get this error. So what is uh, what what can we do about this? So I'm just going to be showing you in the first approach how, how this is actually done. So this part is commented out. I'm going to create dashed lines. And in here, I'm going to show you how you can handle this exception. And you can use it for future references, of course. We have talked about exceptions and how we can handle them. I'm going to comment that one, that part as well. So first off, um, I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it input number. It's not going to grab any parameters. And basically what it is going to do is it's going to carry out all these tasks. So let me copy all of that and let's uncomment it. So this is what this function is going to do. Let me complete, fix the indentation. There we go. I'm going to pass in here uh, this number as well because we have two errors here. Number is not defined yet. So now number is defined. Let's fix the indentation as well. So we have our number. We have our if statement. Perfect. So, so far everything is making sense. We check for three different conditions. But what if what the user enters cannot be decoded as a number. Then we are going to grab our try block. Within the try block, I'm going to call this function. Now, when this function um, um, basically throws an error, I'm going to uh, grab it in th inside the accept clause, and I'm going to print, basically print. Now, this is going to contain all of the errors, so because I've not actually specified any value error. You can see that here we got value error. You could specify value error, but I've not specified it. I, I'm basically, I'm grabbing, I'm catching all of the exceptions. And I'm going to say, please enter a valid number. Now, if you want it to be a little bit uh, emphatic, you can just go ahead and uh, upper, uh, capitalize the first letter of each word. Let's save this. We can see there are no errors. Let's run this code. I'm going to clear this terminal, uh, run this program. So if I say 23, it's a positive number. Perfect. If I say minus uh, 98, you have entered a negative number. Let's pass in zero. You have entered zero. But what if I pass in W? You can see that it says, please enter a valid number. So it doesn't matter what you pass in as long as it is not a number. So if you pass in the a symbol, please enter a valid number. If you pass in like all of this stuff, it says, please enter a valid number until you enter a valid number. It's not going to calculate anything. So this is, there are other ways of actually handling this error. This is by far, I think, the simplest way and the way that it makes the most sense. 
And I will not be handling errors from now on when it comes to numbers. So basically what I will be handling is if a number is zero or less than zero, but I will not handle uh, or catch any exceptions if, if there are like strings and they cannot be decoded into numbers and that sort of thing. I just showed you, we have talked a lot about this, so the rest is up to you, how you can come up with another way of actually optimizing this application. So uh, with this, this task comes to an end. See you in the next one.